This week's episode is sponsored by Ryan at Change. If you are looking to get involved in e-commerce and build a successful online business, then check out my good friend Ryan, who I have been working with the last few years and attended many events and retreats all around the world, spending time with members who are making some serious money. I have been promoting Ryan for a while now because I believe in what he does and not only has he helped and supported me build my own businesses, but I have seen firsthand how he helps and supports his members take their businesses to new levels and give them financial freedom. So if you are interested in getting into e-commerce and building successful online stores, then message Ryan on his Instagram at RyanJB to join his winning team. You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you are notified for when my next podcast goes live. Boom, we're on. And today's guest, we've got Crazy Steve. What's that many what, James? How are you, brother? Yeah, good, Jay. Heard a lot about you. I know people who know you. You've been out of prison, over 10 years in prison, done a lot of mad shit, a lot of not guilties. You've got a powerful book out called Alone, oh. and people understand that title when we go through the podcast. But first and foremost, how are you? Yeah, not too bad, mate, yeah. It's a bit of traffic out there, but other than that, it was all right, yeah. How are you feeling coming on here today? Yeah, good, mate, yeah, good. Watched, yeah, yeah, I watched quite a few of your podcasts, mate, you're a good guy. You know the drill, mate. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't really get too nervous for stuff like this, but... Good. But like I say, your book's going to be powerful, and this yeah. is why we're here. We'll plug the book straight away alone. Yeah. We'll leave a link in the description for people yeah. to get, but people will get the gist of what this book's about yeah. today. So yeah. let's go right back to the start, Steve, where you grew up and how it all began. So, yeah, it was... Um, so I grew up in a council estate, obviously. Um, I'm actually, like, born and bred Redding, so I was born and bred in Redding. Raw Barks. Uh, we then went to a place called Winnish, which was like a little rough council estate area. And then from there, we went from Winnish to a place called Woos Hill and Wokenham, <clears throat> which uh, which is where like sort of like my little journey started. You know what I mean? But other than that, it was uh, it was more like um, just you had a normal little upbringing, really. But council estate, as you do. So I think a council estate for me, like I say normal, some people that's fucking mad. You know what I mean? But it's normal for me. It's just it's just council estate. It's my home, isn't it? What about school? School went to uh, St Paul's. I got I was a naughty kid in there. Just like I was just an average naughty kid. Though. I weren't like the worst or anything like that. I think back then a naughty kid was the worst. But you know, other than that, it was alright. It was when I went to secondary school, where then obviously I went, I got expelled from secondary school. I was just I was eleven, 10, 10, 11. and then that's when I went to boarding school. What did you get expelled for? It was something stupid as well, like, it was, um, so I was just playing up, and then the caretakers, so back then, I don't know if you remember, they had, they weren't computers like they're now, they're now. they were like, um, the tape player ones, remember, like, the box? Yeah. And if you turned it off, every bit of, like, information was lost, and they would go mad, and the caretaker was in, like, he had, like, he opened up the box, and there was all the switches and stuff, and I just turned them all the other way, I was just sat there, waiting, because I'd been naughty, I was sat outside waiting on a chair. <sighs> And he opened the key and then he well, obviously went and I just went in there and switched them all off and all the lights went off. But what I'd done is all the power went off and some of the plays, I turned the big switches off as well. And then the woman come out going, what's going on? Like, this is all the like paperwork and so like, the stuff they'd had on the computers all been lost and stuff like that. So then they put me to the six formers and they were doing their exams. And it's, it's actually in my book, there's a, there's, a, there's a big bit of paper in there and it says like what I'd done in the school to get expelled. <clears throat> when I went in there, I had the Bunsen burner tube on a on a tap, and I turned it on, and I was just playing with it, and they didn't know what I was doing. And I put my, f- my thumb on the Bunsen burner tube, like and it sprayed the water. You know, like on the end of a like a, like a hose. It went. Pff- I didn't mean it to. I was like, ah, and it went all over. They were writing, went all over their papers, and then obviously all the inks run, and then they had to write it all again. It was like, get out. You know what I mean? That was it. I went over, and then they said, to my, they just basically pulled my mum in, and it was like, yeah, 
we don't want him at our school. But I don't think that was that bad, do you know what I mean? Like nowadays, like people are getting like stabbed up at schools or smashed up and stuff like that. I'm just a bit of a naughty. I had ADHD, do you know what I mean? So I was like one of them. What about mum and dad? Mum and dad, yeah, loving parents. Um, my dad was, even to this day, like, I got married the other week and he put his hand on my shoulder for the first time. I was like, oh, okay, a bit of affection, do you know what I mean? Like, but my old man, he's like, he's not really an affectionate person, do you know what I mean? I didn't go and play football with him, stuff like that. He was just there, do you know what I mean? But I didn't like, I think later on in life, I realised my old man, he went to work every day. He was a grafter. He'd come home and I always used to think, oh, my dad wasn't playing football with me or doing stuff like that, do you know what I mean? So like, I didn't have that bond with my dad. My mum, obviously me and her, like, I love my mum to pieces and stuff like that. But yeah, my dad, uh, just like affectionate wise, nah, there's nothing there, do you know what I mean? But other than that, yeah, he's all right, he's a good old geezer, do you know what I mean? How much do you think that affects you, not having that? Obviously, listen, your dad's providing that's, that's love. <coughs> that's yeah, love, yeah, but I don't really have that yeah. affection. I think it does affect you later on. Like, obviously, my dad used to hit me when I was in trouble, he'd smack me up, but his dad used to hit him. Back, that, back then, you was allowed to hit your kids, it was, it was legal, do you know what I mean? But uh, yeah. If sometimes it'd be a bit like that, do you know what I mean? And he'd affect me a bit like that because he didn't mean in certain ways. I'd be like, cool, that was a bit of a shock, do you know what I mean? But I don't think he really realised what he was doing. I think, like, cause now, like, me and him have got a good, good, good friendship, you know? What were they saying when you were getting into trouble and getting expelled, though? Because it, usually it's normally the, the broken homes, the father's not there, the mum. Well, my dad wasn't really talking about my dad. I mean, I got beat up once. I went back to my house. Uh, some guy had bashed me up, and my dad gave me a pickaxe hand. Don't hit him with that. That's the kind of dad my dad was, do you know what I mean, back then. So I had this pickaxe hand on my hand and I went out to go and hit this kid and I couldn't even lift it off the floor. It was there big back then. I'm like 10 or 9, I think I was. And I'm trying to like pick this axe up and mate, he's come out with a little axe. And I'm shit myself. I run back to me front door and I'm banging on my door. My dad wouldn't answer the door. And I'm like, please let me in, dad, please. He's going to kill me. Do you know what I mean? I was so scared, like this, this kid and he, he run back to his house and I was like, thank God for that, you know. Try to teach you a lesson, but again, <clears throat> knowing yeah. now with the science and stuff, that's not normal. That uh, abandonment issues kick right in for kids yeah. who don't. Yeah, that's not loving and nurture. The way uh, it is is uh, the closest thing up yeah. fucking hit them with it. That's not the way you should be taught. Listen, uh, you've got to defend yourself. Don't be a oh, pussy. We yeah. get it, but the old school mentality is the yeah. Even when kids are born, it's the let them cry, the cry out method. That abandonment issues are so strong with that. You've got to love your yeah, kids and yeah. nurture them and skin to skin. And I literally said this the other day as well, like, because um, I've got obviously like two kids with someone and putting them like, like the, the rule is, oh yeah, put them in their bedroom, let them cry, shut the door. I think that's the worst thing to do. Yeah. Love them and keep in the bed with you and hug them and cuddle them and tell them you love them and stuff like that. Give them that bond of growing up of love. And they oh, they they won't have that like sort of like separation in their brain and stuff. And think, separation things, yeah. It? That's what it causes, and, and it causes yeah. massive effects of abandonment. That's how a lot of men struggle now, because yeah. we were always back in the days tough enough. We little cunt. Yeah, but I felt like I was abandoned when I was like when I went to boarding school. I felt like I was abandoned then. That was quite bad for me. That's when my whole chain of events went. So this was in your whole life took a turn for the worst. This is where your book's called Alone. This is when you yeah. went to boarding school. You felt alone. And the abuse started. How long? Yeah. How long were you in boarding school for? And how, how did you get sent there for? So, we went to. Um, I remember going to the. It's like it's a little hospital in Wokenham, and it's like it's like a small little hospital. And then there was a therapy in there, and that's where the social services was. And trust me, don't ever get involved in social services. The UK is just the worst. And um, so yeah, they they, my mum and dad were talking like the therapy, and I was sat in like a little row of chairs outside the office when they went in but I could still hear them because paper thin walls in them terrapins and they were like yeah so they was basically just saying to them uh, we can do this school and that school blah blah anyway I don't even know how to come to it but well I do but anyway I got there was a decision made that I was going to boarding school and then I cried my eyes out mum was crying <clears throat> and it was like you was off so I ended up going and then uh, yeah that was the decision that was made. I think that was one of the decisions from your dad to try and toughen you up. <clears throat> I don't think... Did you ever them? I personally think, even my honest opinion, I personally think it was like, I'm a headache. Let's get rid of it. Do you know what I mean? Like, let them deal with it because we don't know how to. And ADHD back then, parents didn't know how to deal with it a lot. Do you know what I mean? Stuff like that. I think maybe that was it. Like, well, what do we do? Mm. If, 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 they, if you can't go there, then what do we do here? But, do you know what I mean? What boarding school was that? Polyport Manor, Maidenhead. How many people were in this? 
So it was weird. There was two parts of school. You've got the school where you would, the actual school school. And then when you walk, there's a big like castle building here. And that's the boarding school. So people from the outside would go to the normal school, but we had to walk over and then go back to the boarding school. So we was like in there. So it was like, I don't know how many people are in there. I ain't got a clue. Yeah. When did the abuse start? So this, this, it was a hard one, this, this one, because I didn't know for the first year and I didn't have a clue. I know now, um, well, I knew obviously when I left school, but I didn't realize what was going on for the first year because just say, <clears throat> when I first went into the school, it was a case of like, I used to wake up so many times and not know what's gone on, sort of like, stuff that had gone on you know stuff had gone on but you can't make it out and i was like what's going on like my head like i couldn't think straight like i was thinking oh and this was like two months three months i'd wake up with stuff down there do you know that kind of stuff and and then it was just like in the back of my head is like what's like i know something's happened and then the first thing you, you you think of when you're 10 11 12 well, 11 12 whatever years old is i've had a wet dream because boys talk about it and then you think to yourself, oh, that, that's happened to me. And then like, yeah, it's kind of like, that's, yeah, in your head mentally, you start thinking, you start putting this picture together thinking like, but why am I not like, why is there like other stuff hurting that shouldn't be hurting? Like, why is my bed, oh, anyway, hard, it's really hard to talk about some of this stuff, but yeah. So then obviously as it went on, uh, so I was really trying to like explain it to you. Yeah, so it, it went on like over the year. Uh, there was like parts of it where my brain was trying to like remember stuff like and I, I think where I'm ADHD like really like in my head like I'm quite like strong in my ADHD and I, I, I kind of like my brain struggle it really wants to find out what's going on and like, I, I sort of battle my own brain in it and then uh, I was thinking like I know something's happening I know it is but I couldn't put my finger to it so then I was having, uh, I won't go into too much because it's in my book, so just, you have to just read my book, but I was having dinner and then I got the shits. Obviously, you, you get the shits in school and stuff like that. And um, the reason I'm saying this on, on here as well, just to, to let everyone know, is that there is people out there that need to come forward. When you're having this going on, don't hold it and hide it because my whole life is fucked, it has been fucked because of this. And if you don't talk, I know it's hard to talk about it because... I, for years, I was thinking, there's there's a lot of things about me thinking like about gay and shit like that. And like, oh my God, like I've had a man do this to me and stuff like that. And it's really mentally disturbed me, like mentally in my head. And it's really made me think about my sexuality, who I am as a person. It's ruined my relationship sexually and stuff like that, like massively. And I always say self-sabotage before they start. But I'll go back. I just wanted to say like, so if you are out there and you oh, in a bad way and stuff like that. Like, I don't know who they can talk, contact, but you're not on your own, do you know what I mean? Like, there is people out there that can generally help. Anyway, so going back, um, yeah, so I I had, the, I had the shits and then, so I went, yeah, so the guy that obviously done it, he then said, oh, go and get a shower, sort yourself out, obviously, because I had, I had the shits and that. Then he took me down, he goes, oh, I'll give you some medicine. And it was like, I'll, ne I'll never forget it, it was like this little, plastic cap stuff that you just drink back I thought it was to sell your stomach then I went straight to bed I was gone I've passed out do you know what I mean which I now know why and what the crack was and then obviously waking up I woke up halfway through when he was doing what he was doing to me do you know what I mean which I won't say too much and like for, but then anyway I'm really struggling now so I'm so it's like yeah. but yeah Take so time man well, so yeah there's water there as well bro yeah they um, actually might have some <laughs> uh yes so a lot of my like loads of my friends that are watching this now are probably thinking like they a lot of my mates don't know they ain't got a clue do you know what i mean and they're like oh shit they know something's happened like shit like that like shake it but yeah so anyway so i obviously so we know i went yes yeah, so i'm, I'm Obviously, what's happened is happening to me. I've woke up, and um, as, as a man, I like I know people like I know there's women out there that are really in a bad way with stuff like this, 
but I can only tell you from a man's point of view. And as a man, like, you kind of feel degraded. Like, even when I was only like 11, I was 11 years old. When I was 11, I was a little boy, little skinny fraggle, do you know what I mean? From that age, I knew, obviously when I'd woke up, that something in me had gone. Something like, you took, you'd just taken something away from me that should never be taken away from any man which is like like a part of my soul, part of my heart, do you know what I mean? And I, sorry, and I remember like in my head, because I woke up and I couldn't move. I was like paralyzed. I don't know whatever he gave me in that thing. And I remember my eyes could see, you could look around, I couldn't move. I was completely paralyzed. So I don't know what the fuck he gave me. Do you know what I mean? And so you got a thing like from, on my head, like back then, considering I'm looking around and all I was doing, I was screaming for my mum. Like, I was just like, mum, I was like, please, mum, please, like, help me, help me, that kind of stuff. Do you know what I mean? I was screaming for her because I couldn't move. I could only shout in my head. Do you know what I mean? I was like saying, stop, stop, screaming, that kind of stuff. And it was fucking horrible. Like, it was probably one of the worst times of my life. Do you know what I mean? And then it went on, like, after that. Um, obviously, who the fuck did you tell? Who, when that happened, it's like, what? Do you know what I mean? So I did make a phone call. I'm not going to say any what happened. I did make a phone call. I broke into the office at school. I made a phone call to someone. I'm not going to say on here. And that didn't go the way I thought it was. Now I'm definitely on my own. Because I thought that wasn't going to be the case. Um, and I was like, this is happening to me. Blah, 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 blah. And I didn't get heard. Do you know what I mean? So then... Who was that feeling? Uh, How was that feeling for a young kid? I love him. Probably the one of the worst feelings of my life. Do you know what I mean? And it really affects me to this day, do you know what I mean? And you think it's like, I think, like, I think being on your own and being alone, especially when that happens, you're on your own, you're your own, like, I, I feel like, I think the, hard, the hardest thing for me is like, having to deal with like, that mental stuff, the mental side of things, like the mental, that mental torture side of things in your head, then going to someone that you, you think would help you, and they don't help you, and then going back, and then you're like, well, who the fuck am I? I'm just this kid, 11 years old, I've got no one, I've got nothing. So now you're on your own, now you're alone, do you know what I mean? That kind of stuff, and your brain's going 100 miles an hour, do you know what I mean? Who do you tell? You tell your mates, and they go, oh, yeah, whatever, and they all laugh, and you take the piss out of you, and stuff like that. So you, you can't really tell anyone, and then if if you do tell someone, the worst thing for me was like, well, they don't believe, and you go back, and you get it worse. Do you know what I mean? That kind of stuff, I used to shit myself over that. And then it did anyway, it carried on, but it wasn't like all the time. It was like every like three and four months. And then I'd like, and it happened again and it happened again and it happened again. Do you know what I mean? And I used to shit myself. And I knew when I went, I knew that when I had a bad belly, then it was going to happen. I just knew it. But I would like, there's loads of stuff like in there. I, it's weird because I can actually talk about it so much now. And it's hard for me to talk about it. It's all like shitting myself and shaking and stuff, do you know what I mean? But of course, man, you're getting raped for the sake of 11 years old, boy. It's abused, raped. I'm yeah. fucking, like you say, the book's alone for a reason. You felt alone. Yeah. You try to turn to somebody you could trust and they fucking made you worse. They probably done more damage than the guy who was fucking raping you, even though that possibly people think was worse. But to feel as if you'd reached out with somebody crying out for help. Because I've had men on here 20 years, 30 years, mad bastards, but the took them 20, 30 years to open up. Because they blamed themselves, question their sexuality, question yeah. could I lead it on? They're fucking eight, nine, ten, eleven years old, of course. So it's not any man, any paedophile, any man that's they, they deserve a bullet in the head. It's this fucking cringe and disgusting that what these people, their method of thinking is. They're they're not yeah. born for society, they're not born. <laughs> no, they ain't. They're fucking not. Who was this guy? A guy called John Hall. Is he alive or dead? Well, this is the thing. So when when I got out of prison, so I had a chain full of events after that, which was fucking mad. When I got out of prison, there's a guy called Ian Glasby and he's dead now. He was uh, he was like a care of our school and he was sound, like he was actually sound. And then uh, I got out of prison and I went to the ice rink and I'll see him and he gave me a big cut, cut, like, uh, cuddle and then he was gotten all upset. And he was like, oh, I heard what happened because he was an ex-police officer as well. He was like a drug squad copper. And he was like, oh, look, but he was actually sound, like proper sound. And he got, gave him a big hug and that. And he was like, sorry, like blah, blah. And I was like, oh, yeah. And he goes, I heard because he apparently went to jail and that for it. And I goes, oh, right, yeah. And then he went, uh, and I goes, what happened to him? Because 
you've got to understand that when I got out of prison, I was just turning 21. I'd lost a plot, obviously, in jail. I was a pussy right until I lost a plot. I'll explain that in a minute. But uh, I was ready to fucking do this geezer, like on another level, and I wanted to find him. To like, because now I've gone from that to that. There was only one thing in my head, and he told me that he killed. He when, as soon as I said it to him, he was like, "Oh no, I heard he killed himself in jail." I went, "Really?" When yeah, he, he apparently he's hopped himself. Well, he would know because he's a copper. So I, I, I was like, I, I kind of like when I, I think I cried that day. I kind of like got upset, and I was like, "It's like that." Do you know what I mean? Like I was like, because I've gone from being this little schoolboy pussy to a raving fucking lunatic. Do you know what I mean? Like, I didn't care. I didn't care whether I lived or died. Genuinely, like, and to kill me then was a gift. I didn't care to kill me. I don't care, like, genuinely. Because I've had enough. I just had enough. I was like, fuck this shit. And uh, so I went from, like, in my head the whole time, like, I was going through my shit, like, when I see this guy, to, like, well, it's dead. So what do I do now in my life? Well, that's done. He's dead. So what do I do? What do I do now? Do you know what I mean? So when I when I started writing this book with uh, Jay, he's like, this was like two and a half years ago because it took two and a half years to write this book because I kept stopping and starting. I was like, I can't do it. I want people to know about what happened to me. Do you know what I mean? Because you feel like, I don't want people to know that happened. I don't know what it is. You know, like all my mates feel like I'm a bit of a boy. Do you know what I mean? It's like, oh no, can I hear the rape? What the fuck? Like he had that happen to him and he was abused. You know what I mean? And stuff like that. And it's like sexually stuff. It's just like, you don't feel like a bit of a man. You kind of feel like weak. Yeah, degraded. Degraded and stuff. So it's really hard. I kept breaking down in, the, in this book. I, this book is so powerful. I broke down so many times in the book and kept re, like going back and writing it again. And he was like, come on, Steve, please. And he was like ringing me back going, let's get this book. Come on, let's sort it. And I was like, I can't cope mentally. This book in the last two and a half years have mentally destroyed me. Like it's mentally destroyed me as a person. But what you think, Matt, is even though it's mentally destroying you, it's also mentally building you up again. Yeah. Because it's therapy. Writing it down. Yeah. And speaking out about that. It's nothing to do with being a geezer or you're going to lose your dignity, your hope or your whatever the fuck it is. It shows strength, courage, power, showing that it's not got the power over you anymore. Sitting here talking about it, it's t that's you giving, give, taking your power back. That's you fucking giving it back where that cunt's not got any power over you. Uh, that's a fucking strength. Yeah. You can go, do you know what, fuck it. It's painful, but every time I talk about it, it takes away the pain because I'm taking my strength back, your power back. Um, Jeff Thompson, Unbelievable man, speak about him all the time. Jeff was abused by his instructor. He just kept feeling hairy hands at night and abusing him. And Jeff became a killer, a fucking killer. He became a bouncer, nearly killed a guy. He called it the parasite. Because he never faced that, the parasite got bigger and bigger and bigger. Oh, became, mate, miss. He became a parasite. And he always says he'd always think about killing this guy. Jeff became an eighth dan, one of the most dangerous men on this planet. Unbelievable. Seen the man. Now he's a killer, dreamed about killing him his whole fucking life, seen him in a cafe, as soon as they seen him, Jeff froze, eighth Dan, killer, froze, guy had his power, and Jeff went up to One him. I can imagine that as well, Jeff, oh, I actually can, yeah. yeah. So all that dreaming about killing him, this and that, they've got the power, so Jeff seen him, told him, the guy broke down, and then Jeff walked away, and he says that moment there was the moment the parasite died, I got my power back, he says I couldn't kill him anyway, I froze. And then I thought, it's not worth it. Because you imagine dreaming about killing that man, being raped by this man, abused, fucking tormented, torturing them. But you doing that, yeah. you then be in prison for life, even though you probably think it would be vengeance. But then you wouldn't be able to live the life you have now. Yeah, I kind of feel like, oh, I'm a bit different on this one, I think. I kind of feel like my whole life, for when I got out of jail, like it's just been... Hang on, I wish. Fucking hate getting on this. But yeah, I can't. It's a war. Yeah, take your time, listen. This is what it's all about. You're leaving emotions on the table. You're leaving change. You're leaving. I don't feel like. The, cal the caliber of a man that I am now, I hope. Because when I was writing the book, he was kind of like. He was saying, oh, yeah, like, is he alive? Is he dead? And I was like, I don't want to know. Because I'll find the guy in 24 hours. I know that. Because I know who I'm connected to. Do you know what I mean? I know in 24 hours, I know, I know his address, where he is, but, and I know what I'll do. When, like you're saying about Jeff Rose, this guy, right through my whole entire life, the minute I wake up, my, my, my nightmare starts. 
every day from school. Fucking hell. When did you go up to school? Hold on. Um, I put a hockey stick over someone's head and got expelled. I'd had enough. Is that when you broke? I broke, I, well, no, I didn't break that. I broke enough in there. When I come out of there, I went, I went from there, I went and robbed. So my auntie's fellow at the time had a load of guns. I went and he showed me him being a big guy and I went and robbed him. I broke into our house when they were on holiday and I robbed his guns. Now all of a sudden I've got some guns and as soon as I started pointing them at people, they shit themselves. And then for the first time in my life, I had a bit of power where I was felt so weak and raped and abused. Do you know what I mean? I now got power with these guns. So I'd done some arm robberies. I robbed these, these, these geezers in Milton Keynes. We stopped the train, held the whole train and took all loads of stuff off the train. The people shot this, shot at this mate in the park. Fucking mate, I went nuts with his guns, you know what I mean? And I was up for like loads of charges on him. And then I ended up getting like, it was like four years, 42 months, 36 months in a sentence. And then I went to prison for it. But before that, before that happened, I went uh, to I went to a local authority in Suffolk, and then I was in his place in there, and I was because uh, I was only fifteen, and then before obviously when I got the guns, and then I was drowned in a pond by one of the geese, and they well two of them fucking put me in the pond because I was like sub, and they were trying to smash me up, and then they got the lighter gas. I was only I remember back then I was a skinny little fraggle, like a proper skinny little fraggle, like I was a pussy, and they like put me in the pond and pulled me out and they stuck the lighter fluid they was whacking it in my jaw trying to like and it was like freezing cold and it was like going over and I started going dizzy and that because it makes you go a bit wide that stuff and I was in my room just sat there at night time and that and the next minute I'm like asleep and my room goes open and one of the kids has got this metal thing he made and we got this metal place we're not supposed to take him he must have took it with him somehow he started stabbing me in my back with it and I'm asleep got holes blood and punched holes at me and I'm running downstairs trying to like like help sort of thing the obviously like it's all sort of like come to like oh, you don't grasp then so it's like what's happened oh I don't know and I got there and I froze when I sort of got down I was like I don't know I don't know and I sort of like went back so he's like cleaned me up and all my stuff out and I, and I sort of like didn't say anything anyway I escaped there went to my sister's when I got to my sister's obviously then I went and broke in got the gun stuff like that and it went a bit crazy but I went from like born in schools children's homes reminded to local foreign in Suffolk and then from there to my sister's and then for them crimes I got them banged up and I always went to Felton first then from Felton I went to Glen Parver which was what was that like going to prison were you ever worried about the same shit happening at boarding school going to the adult prison I, I'll tell you what it was for jail for me I shit myself I don't care I ain't no big man then I was shitting myself because now the gun's not there <laughs> I mean I'm this little kid that I was just a little kid that needed help really and I didn't get it. I just went from there to there to there. And then I'm, now I'm in a box the size of fuck knows what, do you know what I mean? And I'm sitting there and I ain't gonna last shit the life out of me. I was thinking, and there's like all men in this jail. I'm as skinny as that. And there's all like men that are quite like 20, 21 year olds. I'm like 15, well, 16 I was then. And they're ripped to death. And I'm thinking, I'm gonna get ironed out. And I did. I got smacked up so many times. I got bullied in jail bad. And then, uh, and I'm going to sit and go, yeah, I was in jail, I was a bit of a boy. No, I weren't, I was a fraggle. <laughs> 15, 16, 17, 18, all the way through my young years, I went from Feltham to Glen Parva. Glen Parva went in there, mate, it was, there were just kid, people killing themselves. Went from Glen Parva to Reading, and then from Reading, I was literally a fraggle in Reading. And I went to Portland, and that's why I met Ray Winston in there. Who was Ray Winston in prison? So he he went back, because that's where he'd done the, the movie oh, Scum. He went back, there's pictures of my book of me and him in, in the actual jail. Who was he? Yeah, he was all right. He was actually all right, to be fair, considering what my head was just gone. I don't even know how I managed to get a conversation with him. Was he just doing his visits for, because he'd been in that prison? Yeah, he, he was doing a bit of a film, doing a little bit of a movie thing, there's all the camera crew there with him. But uh, I remember saying to him, I goes, well, you ran, I was saying, I was saying, because I watched the film before he came in. Didn't even watch the film until he came in, that's the first time I watched it, because I was in my head, but... Like the, my head the way it was. And then I was like, oh, where's your tool? And he went, where's your fucking tool? Do you know, he actually done it. But he was quite mad. But he was, he he, he seemed sound. Like, he, as he seemed sound. But he was like, he actually like, had a bit of like love for us. Do you know what I mean? He's like inmates and stuff. 
But there's a couple of movie, little mini movies that are out there for that prison. I'm in them. When did you then break, <clears throat> not becoming the scared boy and decided to start hurting other people? Portland prison was ruthless, mate. I'm telling you, it was ruthless. Like, so, in, I, I got it, like, you need to understand about Portland. There's people trying to sue the prison now from when we was in there, 97, 2000. That was rough as you like. Fart no. Oh my God, yeah, no toilets, piss pots, buckets. But it was the screws, mate. They used to bash you up and people know this. This is like common knowledge. Do you know what I mean? And people are like, nah, like, yeah, it did. I walked in there from Feltham and obviously you say gov or boss. That's what you say. All right, boss, all right, gov. And I walked in there and it was like, he was writing this thing out. He goes, strange. I went, yes, gov. He stood up. And he put his pad down, walked around, and smacked me straight in the face. And I swear, this is no lie. I, I'm like ringing. I'm like 16 year old kid. And I'm like, fucking, he's grabbed me. He pulled me up and he goes, here, you call me sir, boy. Do you want to fucking stand me? And every single person that was sat down was like, shit. They all shit themselves. And I was like, what the fuck? And then I got back up and I was like, he goes, what's my name? And I went, sir. He goes, what's my name? I went, sir. He went, right, this is your number. And he gave me TL3908, which was my number there. I'll never forget that for the day I die. Lestrange was my wing, uh, my name. Rally, well, at the time it was Nelson. Nelson was my wing and it was sir. So I stuff to go, TL3908, Lestrange, Nelson, sir. Until I went to Rally, do you know what I mean? And, that, and, you, and if you hear keys, you have to stand up in your cell. And it was bed packs. So you had to play bed packs. It was all like army run. You stand up, say your name and number. That is literally what happens in there. It's, like, it's ruthless. The one thing about Portland, which is the worst for this jail, is if I'm getting bullied, which I was, I used to get smacked up all the time in there. So I was a little fraggle. Well, until I started getting to like 80, 90, and started putting a bit of size on and had enough of being beat up, you start fighting back. But like, the worst thing about Portland is, um, if, say like you're in the prison and you're just minding your own business and I come and smack you straight in the face, you go to pr you go to block as well. I don't care who started it, you're both going to block. So you get bullied and you get punished again for it. So you're getting punished for being bullied. It's like, what? That, that, if you, that had mental torture, mate, I don't know what it is. So I'd be like, like getting smacked up at the bottom of the stairs or something, like two of them were jumping on me, kicking me in the face and that. And we were getting handcuffed. I ain't done nothing. I've got, I've got me food. Just going back to my cell. Nine times out of ten, I didn't even want to go to association. I was looking back to my cell. Because I don't want the drama. I, just, I didn't want it. I was so scared. And I'd get beat up and I'd be down block and I used to have a vest top on. And you have to wear shorts and a vest top down there. That is like the rules. After they've ripped all your clothes off you and thrown you in a fucking cell. <laughs> and then you go into your cell and I used to put my vest up over my knees and I'd sit there freezing, rocking. And they take your mattress out so you've got no mattress. You've got nothing in there. It's just like freezing cold. And then I used to sit there thinking to myself, like crying and crying and crying for my mum, like screaming. Like, I, I had enough, mate. I always used to cry for my mum all the time. I, I don't know. She's like the only thing, in my life. she's the only person in my life that was there. Well, you know, I'm on a map. It's hard talking about shit like this. Of course it is, man, but this is why we're here. Is that the only person you feel safe with? At first, yeah, because obviously, like, when you were out of school, then it's done, isn't it? Like, 10 years old, like, my mum, up until I was 10, loved me to pieces. Do you know what I mean? I was like, we were really close. And then we faded out after that. So I think from 10, that, well, say 11, then me and my mum never really had a relationship probably after that. We were like, I spoke to her and stuff, but. That love bond, that really kind of close that I had before that, to four was eleven. That was really tight with my mum. Do you know what I mean? Like, I kind of lay up in bed, and she was really cuddly and like. I think that's because you closed off <clears throat> because of what happened to you in the children's home. I yeah, I kind of feel like I feel like when so the, the whole the whole thing in Portland. This is this is where like, I lost the plot. Like I might. This is where like everything. So anyway, I went. <clears throat> I was in block. I was just turning 20. I don't know when I was 20 already. So I was just turning 20 or 21. I can't remember where it's gone. And I was down block and I'd been beat up again. And my fucking, my lip had been split here. My eye was split. And I was quite badly bashed. And I was like, ah, fuck this. I tried to kill myself. I threw myself off the landing head first. Uh, done my skull in. I got my ribs broke. Had my back broke. I was in a wheelchair for three months in jail. My sister come and visit me and I was in a wheelchair. I, it was bad. I got fucked up. It was broke. Skull, it feel like jaw broke. And in the end, I'd had enough. I literally had enough. I sat in the, in block. I'd been beat up again. 
and I can't explain it to anyone. This is how I explain it. Only thing I think of is like you know, like that na- that nail noise. That I heard that in my head. It went and it hurt. And since that happened, I just switched. Like I didn't care. I was like, I was like, what the fuck? And I just stopped crying. I was crying my eyes out. I was such a like shaky baby cry. Do you know what I mean? Like every fucking way through the thing, I was always like, I'll go in myself, shut my door, and then cry and hide away. People say, like, couldn't see my weakness and that. And in the end, I just, I just, I remember being down block and I was like, fuck this. And I was like, fuck this, I'm done. Anyone looks at me in the wrong way is getting it. Anyone, anyone who does that speak to me. And I'll tell you what happened, the funniest thing as well. So obviously after I was down block, because this, this guy bashed me, who we went back to the block and I had my handcuffs on. They untook my handcuffs, I walked straight, the association was on, I walked straight over the pool table, picked the pool bottle, kept it in my hand, run over and smacked it straight in his face and just kept on doing it. And I didn't have to fight them properly. I just kept hitting him. And he's like, you're dead, are you mad? You're fucking dead, watch, watch, you get it, you get it. I was like, I was like no, you're dead, watch. I'm actually going to fucking kill you. He was like, yeah, I was, no, I am actually going to fucking kill you. I was, I was like proper on him. And I see the screws looking at me and then they obviously ripped me up and handcuffed me again, take me back down block. I didn't just come off from block. And I was like, I'm going to fucking kill you. Trust me, like I'm actually going to do it. And I genuinely meant it. I was going to cut his throat. Because I had enough. I thought, fuck this shit. I'm in jail. I don't know where, I, don't, I thought I'd never get out of prison. I didn't know, I didn't have a clue what I was. I'd fed up with being bashed and bullied and raped and beat and shit. I had enough. I was like, kill me then, kill me, I don't care. So, I mean, I just tried to do it myself. And then I thought to myself, die or die trying. That was literally it. Like, you could, you, you know, if you kill me, then at least I fought. At least I fought for it. Do you know what I mean? That's what it's all about. So we're down block and he's screaming, like, in his cell. You're fucking dead. Watch. When I watch. And I was just sitting and listening to him. And I was just, I think I was whistling and singing a song. I didn't care. Usually I'm like, please, don't oh, no, I'm dead. I'm dead. Like, he's going to do me in. I'm shitting myself. Please, please don't take me back to that wing because he's going to do me in. This time I was, I was whistling and singing. I was like, I'm going to kill this guy. I'm going to kill him. I don't care. And that was when I knew I'd lost it. I'd lost the plot. What was the suicide of Fox like? Were you always suicide? Before, like? before that day, after that, never again. Oh, apart from a couple of times when I had a bit of breakdowns out here. When I was thought, fuck it, just take me. I've looked up at the sky and gone, take me. But other than that, I used to think about just doing myself in and what's the point. I didn't see the point mm-hmm. in life. Did I just pain. didn't see the yeah I didn't see the point in it. What I'd lived up until then, w- what life is there after this? What's the point? How many times did you try to take your leave? Twice, one properly, one nearly properly. Would you jump off the fucking landing? What happened? Smash all what's going. Well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've done all the fucking crap. I'm laughing, mate, because I know how fucking much pain yeah. you're in to do that. Because that's yeah. not even you've not tried to slit your wrist or fucking hang yourself. Uh. You went out there. I did try and hang myself. I, I I took all the bits of what you do is you get your fire blanket and you cut all the bits and you feed all the bits of rope out through it and then you make it a bit thicker and then in our cells in Portland there were like a bar that come through and as it come through you had like a it come in the thing and I'd done that but it just snapped. So it didn't do anything. I put it down there, I jumped and it just snapped and it was even quite thick I'd it still snapped. What was the feeling when it snapped? Was that a relief or were you still Guided. in? Guided. Couldn't even kill myself. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, couldn't what's do anything that, wrong. What's that feeling when you want to end that. What is the mindset? Because I, and I, I do work for Chrissy's house and uh, we've had people come in with their rope buns and um, it's just a feeling. Did you feel at peace when you try to kill yourself? I just thought, yeah. I felt, I felt like if I was gone, then they all, all you got to remember like where the whole prison thing didn't really bother me as much being beaten. Don't get me wrong, I was always crying and scared and stuff like that. It all went back to the school. Yeah. That really destroyed me as a man. And I thought, how am I going to cope with life after this? Do you know what I mean? Other things happen I'm not going to get into, but loads, like, so most of it's in my book. But I think I need, like, some more shows or something to talk about other stuff because it's so much. What day, so, see, before you were trying to kill yourself, was it a plan or was it just an instant thing? Fuck, I'm going to kill yourself. I was at weeks. No, it was, it was definitely planned. It was definitely planned. I was, I was just thinking, like, what am I going to do when I get out of prison? Like, that was, I think I used to think that stuff, like, when I get out, what is there? What is there for me? What am I going to go and do? Do you know what I mean? Like, were you drinking, taking drugs or anything? I took I took drugs before I went in there, but not like, I wasn't like a druggie or nothing, like, nothing like that. You were your mates, do a bit of weed or that, do like a few pills or something, do you know what I mean? But it wasn't like continuously on them. So you've snapped then? What age were you? Lost. Yeah. What was that feel like? I'll tell, tell you what I noticed more than anything. When I started to stick it on people properly, 
So I've done a whole bucket of hot water over some matey. When I with sugar in it, when I done, when I got to that point, people started going, oh yeah, and the screws started respecting me a little bit, and so did the inmates. They all started having that little bit of respect. Oh, I don't go in there because I hope I'd lost. It. I literally didn't care. So they moved me wing, which one I was to see Bray Winston on, and everyone was kind of nice in there. Do you know what I mean? They had a fight up the land there and a couple of fights. I didn't care. I'm like, come on, let's have it. I got smacked a couple of times in my face, but I still didn't care. And then after that, I kind of got a bit of respect from people, and I kind of thought, well, we want to respect me now. But now I'm fighting you back. You want to respect me now? And like, I didn't understand it too much. Quite confused more than anything. Yeah, but if you're crying and you're at yourself, sheepish, you're a target. Sharks sniff that shit out, man. <clears throat> you're a fucking target. But you fight back, you, you go, okay, well, there's no point in fighting him. But because people who, they're, the bullies, people who bully are scared. Yeah, yeah. They're full of fear. They're yeah, just, yeah, they're yeah. Because like, yeah. again, they're 100%. so fragile. So 100%. They're just, but if you start sticking up to them, they, then they want to be your friends. Some of my best friends from back in the days because we had a fucking scrap in the town or yeah. like, we were enemies. But just when you get older, you realise, for what? Because of hearsay, you're fucking loyalties to the wrong person. It's just, it's cringe. So you've snapped in and decided, fuck it, enough's enough. What was it like when you had that power back? You're gaining some power back? That's probably the first time in my life that I thought, I've got something worth living for. So you've got, you've got something there that, you know, now you can sort of say, like, come on in, let's have it. I think what, what was more with me as well, like, up until I met... Obviously, like, I went to Spain, I met Carl and stuff like that. Before that, I would like I got out of prison and I'd come out of jail and I was bullied before I went there by quite a few different people in the area and that. And people know this to this day as well because I've got these people back. When I come out, I was like walking down the street and I saw two people who used to bully me and I literally just beat the shit out of them. I didn't care. And they're like, and then all of a sudden it was like, Steve's out of jail and he's tough. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He, he's fighting, not this little wimp. And then I went round and I started beating the guys that bashed me. And then there was one guy who was in a pub. And oh, I'll never forget it. It's when they, they had a brick in a pub. They used to have matches in there when people were smoking them. And they had the matches inside the brick and you strike the match off the brick. And I went into the pub and the guy was sat there and he went, Oh my God, Stephen Lestrange, what are you doing in my pub? And I went, who's this geezer? And he bashed me up at youth club, swung me round and he actually pissed on me in front of everyone. That's how much of a fucking prick he was. And I went, who are you then? And then instantly I clocked. And I just picked the brick up and smashed it straight in his face. I started weighing him in. And I bashed him up bad and I was getting dragged off. And I was just, I went fucking nuts and that. And I was trying to get a glass. I was going to stick anything in his face. Whatever I could get is going in his head. And then everyone's like, oh my God, Steve's done so and so, blah, 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 blah. And then got back to my sister's house and that. And I was like, clean with blood off me. It's not mine. And my sister, Rachel, was like my rock. Like she was like my twin. We're only a year apart. But everything that I'd done, all the people from the local area would go there because you know you'd be safe. She'd never grasp up to the police. She was always like one of us. And the streets that we lived in, in serious clothes and that, like you could go through one house, go out the back garden, jump over two doors, go in another door. And he was always like everyone from the council estate. No one grasped you up. It was quite good. It's like a little community family because they had this, uh, they had this nonce when I got out of prison who got uh, done for doing one of my mate's uh, sister's. And we went round then, just dragged him out of the house, beat him up, snapped his arm, broke him up. Then the, the police come in, riot. We had, it was called the Woos Hill Riot, and I was arrested, and two of the boys got let out, and they were like, Steve Strange stays in over for other charges and shit. And it was like, and I was, we just annihilated him, and we was breaking in. I, I got handcuffed in the police car, my sister let me out, and running up the street, handcuffed, like that chuck of tiles off the roof. It was a proper little riot. But we didn't give a shit, do you know what I mean? And like that kind of stuff. And then, see, like that, I started getting a rep for myself, because I didn't care. And the madder you go in your head and like, so I'd wake up in the morning and my head would go like tick, 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 do you know what I mean? And I'd be sitting there going like, right, I need to go do something. If I don't do something, I'm going to go fucking crazy because my past would not stop. <laughs> it just eats me like a plague, like you said, like a tape, like 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 a parasite. It's fucking horrible. So every single day I'd be like, bang, bang, be like tick, 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 tick. So I'd be like, well, I've got to go and do something, I've got to go and do something. And the worst thing I'd done is i drunk. So if you've got mental health, like genuinely, like if you've got mental health out there, do not drink. Do not smoke. Do not take drugs. I'm teetotal now for like 10, 11 years. I don't do it because it's the worst thing for you. I started drinking and I, to, I straight instantly, I was a brandy drinker. I don't know why, the worst thing ever. We had a fight in Reading. and we was over the news. So we went to Cuba and I was drinking this uh, brandy with flight ice in it and I started to drink and I went up to VIP and my mates were downstairs. 
And while I was on my game then, like I was fucking bashing people left, right and centre. I was going to the pubs, clubs, blah, blah, blah. And even if I got beat up, I didn't care. I'm not the hardest man in the world. And let me tell you this, yeah, you know, like some people that I know, like good friends of mine, they're like, yeah, I'm the biggest, hardest man. And they go, you know, you're not. I, I shall, let me just say this quickly as well. I'm telling you now that most of the people that I know, and I'm saying most of the people I know, and I've been around and I've got like, I know big communities out there in Reading, Wokenham, Winnersh, like um, Crowthorn, all these big areas. I know big communities, big gangsters. I know like traveling communities, big traveling communities. You've got loads of big traveling. They're all nutters. Every one of them are nutters, yeah? Not one person around that area is the biggest gangster. The worst ones are the youngers. The 16, 17 year olds, they're the worst. See, like we've got us, the adults, like we've got my, my lot from Reading. I've got like a bit of a firm in Reading. They're like real decent. And they're nuts. I won't say their names on here because, you know, whatever reasons. But um, I've got like a Reading firm. They're nuts. You've got my Bratnell lot. They're nuts. But the worst ones are the 16, 17 year olds. They're like 20. A lot of my nephew and all of his mates, they all carry around carving eyes this big. It's not brave. It's not clever. They're the worst. They got 20 of them on mopeds. Half of them are nicked. They don't care. And they'll come like, I would rather fight or go to war with someone like a big stocky man who can fight than them. Stop. Oh my God, you'd be dead. Yeah. They An incident happened not long ago. It took a couple of weeks back. And uh, I had to go and have a meeting with one of my pals because my one of my family members, like the younger, had had a pop at him. And they got together and there was going to be, one was on about a summer I saw, they on about this. And I was like, oh my God. So I've got a met. I said, right, you two shake hands before this gets naughty because they're my mates. And my nephew's like, I don't care. Like, they're just crazy. Like, they're actually crazy. They don't care. Like, and he said to me once, uh, oh, if I go to prison, people are going to respect me. He got in his head, I don't care. I feel like I'm going to become more of a man. I said, are you deluded? So you, you actually think if you go to prison, you're not, look at me. Like, and I think he, they look at me like, because I'm a bit of like one of them, I'm not an old gangster bad boy, nothing like that. Bad boy, yeah, but not a gangster. Enough. I don't class myself as that. Even though, like, who I'm linked with, I class myself as this one big ball of mental health. Do you know what I mean? That has, who's still just going through life and winging it <clears> and, and, like, getting myself to where I need to be. And that's why I said to you, like, that parasite thing, like, if I, I know for a fact, I don't want to know where this guy is, I would not freeze because... He still ruins my life to this day. To this day. The whole of my life has been destroyed. My mental health, my brain. I can't cope from day to day. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, So I know that that would be my breath of fresh air. Do you know what I mean? And I wouldn't just do the geezer in. I would spend weeks and weeks because of what I'm capable of doing. Do you know what I mean? I would actually do some serious stuff to this guy. So when Jay said it, I was like, do not tell me. I've got a missus and kids and I want to see them. Because I will do something stupid. I'll put things in places you know, like fitted. Do you know what I mean? Is it still alive or is it dead? Oh, I got told he was dead. I don't want to know if he's fucking alive. I just, I genuinely don't want to know because I know what I'm capable of doing. Still no? Yeah, fuck me. If he, if I knew, I, I don't want to know because I know that my life's still destroyed because of this guy. Do you know what I mean? Every day if my head just goes mad. It's like the screams in my head and that. So I screamed every fucking day for this guy. And then after that, it was prison screams. So it's like, I feel like that just went on until I was 21. I feel like it was like 11 years old till I was 21. I thought that that was all one big bubble. And then I got out of prison and my head went a bit more calm when I started turning into a nutter. I feel like up until I was 21, I feel like that was the whole, like it was a whole thing. It was all molded into one, do you know what I mean? Heel. Yeah, yeah, kind of like that. And I feel like that put me in all that place and it's like all mixed together. Do you have a question why you had to go through that? Why you? 100%, million percent. I always feel myself, I always just like look up to God and go like, what, 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 why? Do you know what I mean? What have to do that for? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you've went through all the pain and torment and been living in hell for 10 years old. Yeah. You've sold a billion. You've snapped. What happens then when you go out of prison and start making a name for yourself? What sort of shit were you doing? So I, I was out of prison three days the second time and I flew to Spain. So that's where I met Colin Leach. Cause shout out with Colton. Yeah, shout out Colton. Um Yeah, I, I so in the second movie, when they all got stabbed, I went to Spain. Like I ended up going with one of my uh one of the pals that I knew here. I flew out of him to Spain and then that's when I met Colton when they all got stabbed up to go and back him 
from what had gone on. So I didn't know what I was walking into. I didn't really care. Like I said, I didn't care we lived or died. So, and Colwyn knows this. So I went over there and like, there was a big car load, went over with five of them in a car driving past and that. And I was just like that, looking at them thinking, hey, they could have just gone bang. And I was be like, go on then. Know what I mean? Like, there's my gift. <laughs> Would you have been happy today? Oh, well, then I would have been, yeah. Then I didn't care. I didn't give a shit, to be honest. I didn't care if I lived to die then. And people know that for me. People that know me back then know that I did not give a shit. I thought anyone, anyone. I went through people's doors. I didn't give a shit. Like, I generally didn't care. What were you doing for money? <laughs> oh, robbing drug dealers. Taxing? No. Uh, debt collecting, but not. So we just found it easier just to go to the end. So if there was a drug dealer going on, like, we would, instead of selling it and all fucking about, we'd just go to the end of the day, yeah. And we was like, we had intel everywhere. So people would be like, oh, give us a drink, and I'll tell you who's got this. Give us a drink, and I'll tell you who's got that. So we'd be like, oh, you know, he's got 20 grand or whatever there. So I'd ring my pal, the Reaper, and call him the Grim Reaper. Cole knows him. <laughs> he's a nutcase. He is fucking tapped. Um, and I'd ring him up. He'd be like, yeah, see you soon. And then get talked up, geared up, and then we'd go straight through and do what we got to do. How was that then, from being bully to them being a bullier? Yeah, I kind of thought it was all right because it was drug dealers. kind of thought, like, well, they're doing wrong, so it doesn't matter. I had, a, I had a rule. I don't ever do kids. And if there's any kids there, I won't do it. I won't go for a house with kids in it because I just, I still had a heart. Even though, like, I was doing what I was doing, I still thought myself, like, no women and no kids. If there was women in there, I wouldn't do it. If there was kids in there, I wouldn't do it. And I'd always, if it was a guy, I'd wait for him. So this is this is a funny one. I've watched so many of your podcasts as well, and I've seen other guys out there like these bad boys and stuff, and I've seen how they've worked. So say you've got a guy who's on his game, and he's like, yeah, I've got to make him as a change, he's got his big flashy car, and all the rest of it, and everyone knows what he's doing. He goes and puts four dogs in his house, every camera you can think of, and these dogs are killier. They're like four big bad boy dogs, and he's there, and he's got these big gates, and it's all camera and high with spikes on it and that. I I we I sort of like had this thing in my head where I, I could plan stuff. I don't know what it was. I I used to get things and go, "Well, how can we work this geezer out to get this geezer?" And it was easy. Just get him on the way out. <laughs> Why would you go in his house? Do you know what I mean? Just take him when he's out. So I said to my pals, "All right, he's got all that security. He's got all them dogs." So as he leaves the house, he's just crash into him. He thinks he's been hit. Dress up as old people, so he thinks he's an old lady because you can get them. Trust me. And you put them on, and then we just take him. And as soon as he goes there, just cattle pod done do you know what I mean and, and another thing you know what people say about putting people in boots of cars I think people have done it but I kind of feel like it's not I've never seen that do you know what I mean I saw like I've seen this like not for me personally because we're on camera but a, a car, like a van and then you tape you, you put all the plastic sheet in the van with the side door open and then you've got a driver and you drive with the door open and as soon as the geese is going to where his car, or whatever, it's just bang, it was stunning him, and then straight in the back, and he just rolled, literally roll him in the back of the side door, shut the door, zip tie him up, and that's him done. Do you know what I mean? And it's just, it's actually quite easy to do that, but I wouldn't put someone in the boot of a car. That'd be a nightmare. It'd be really hard to get someone in the boot of a car. Do you know what I mean? Trying to squash him in or trying to tuck him in, or yeah. and the boot you can just look drama. Whereas that one is so quick that you just draw a pass like bang in. Shut the door. No one even knows what's happened. Before you know, he's, he's taken. Do you know what I mean? And it's just the films that give it that effect for the book. Because if they're trying to get in the book, they're going to scream, shout, yeah. holding the book, kicking, side of the van, you're in, it's dark. Yeah. You're I've, just coming. I've seen big, big men in the back of the van, mate. I've seen big men, like, I don't know how many fucking think for this, but I've seen big men in the back of vans. Allegedly. Yeah, yeah, allegedly. Um, seen people in the back of vans. I've heard stories. And like big men, like proper, like you think they were gangs of bad boys and they cry their eyes out. They, as soon as they think they're in there, like they go from this to like, please, do you know what I mean? Shit themselves. But yeah. everybody's got that. No, feel this isn't, uh, everybody's got fear in them. Some yeah. people can overcome it and override it better than others. Yeah. Depends what they've gone through in life. But you're right, man. People shit themselves, piss themselves. Nobody wants to die. They don't. Unless you've got that feeling where you think, I don't want it anymore. But the big top men <laughs> who think they're top men, listen, the majority of the big boys now are all grasses. This is the society we were in. Do you know what I mean? So, all of it. And you find out who they are when it's put on them. Remember, a lot of the people get away with it because they've been acting for so long. Yeah. Like a madman like you, crazy yeah. Steve. It's, a, it's all an act. It's all yeah. a game. Yeah. Because yeah. if we know we act that way, people are not going to harm us anymore. Yeah. But when actually some of these men, you actually see them getting put on the stories I've heard, you think, 
yeah, it makes sense now. He has a shit house. But I've had it put on me loads of times. Like from, I, I would get to the point where like, look, in my area, like where I'm from, and uh, big up Berkshire, <laughs> big up Berkshire, because <laughs> people think that Berkshire is like a country bumpkin little town. It's not at all. In our area, there is some serious bad boys in there. A lot of the travellers in there, you, you wouldn't mess with these travellers, you know what I mean? You wouldn't mess with these Albanians, Polish that I know, like I know good Albanian people that I know. You've got the Italians, you've got the Greeks, like the Cypriot Greeks, I know all them well. You've got the, uh, obviously like the Muslims that I know, all the Muslim boys, they're sound, I know them well. Do you know what I mean? And you've got the blacks, I know all the blacks well, do you know what I mean? And you've got some serious firms there, and you've got the cancer estates, like just the cancer estate firms, do you know what I mean? You've got some serious firms in the area, and like I'm not like the bad the bad guy to come from the area, far from it. But I'm I'm like a part of the furniture. Do you know what I mean? Like that's that's my manner. Do you know what I mean? And we're all from like there's out of me in my area, there's probably fifteen hundred of the same of me that are crazy. They don't even do anything to you. Like most of the people that I know. So say like uh, say say I've got a problem with someone, and I know that this guy this this is where respect comes on the street. So I've got this guy. And he's pissed me off. Don't know. I'll make a phone call and say, listen, what's going on? And he'd be like, look, Steve. I'm like, all right, cool. Let's sort it. So he sorted out a phone call. If that phone call didn't happen and that didn't get sorted, someone's getting shot. They ain't getting shot, they're getting stabbed. Or they're getting, you know, something or, they, or a car's getting straight into your side of you. That's, that's what it's like in the area. And it could be like someone that's not even a bit of a, bo- not even a bad boy, but he don't really give a shit and he doesn't want to lose face. In our area, you can't lose face in our area. If you lose face in our area, you might as well move. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You've got to move out of the area. Simple as that. If you lose face, you can't lose face. You'll get someone that don't want to lose face and he'll drive his car straight into you and he'll jump out of his boys and they'll still back it even though they don't really want to. They they got to. Do you know what I mean? Fear pressure. Yeah, yeah. When did you start getting the tattoos? Tattoos are a big saying how some days as, as well. So yeah. It's like a self and kind of thing. So I, I got my tattoos when I was like 22, 23 when I was coming up in the game and that. Like I just got loads. I started smashing my body and tattoos and I quite liked them. Watched a few of the movies and then I thought, yeah, I quite like sleeves. Just that. Yeah, yeah. So I was kind of like, yeah, that's like a bit of me. Like, I quite like it. And to be fair, I, I thought the birds like it as well, the ladies, innit? So I was thinking, <laughs> I mean, a lot of tattoos. I remember going to a club once and this guy was two sleeves up here and the girl was you know, all done up with his hair and that. He looked good. And the girl was all over him like a rat and he was a bit of a boy as well. And I thought, fuck that, I want to be that guy. Do you know what I mean? Tattoo me up. Do you know what I mean? I'll be a bit, well, I'm not get, I'll knock that guy out. Do you know what I mean? I'll go in there and beat him up. <laughs> and then I all the girls would want me. And that is literally what happened. When did you end up back in prison? I got done for three GBHs, two ABHs, common assault, and assault with a police officer in Reading in a nightclub. I, sh- I shut the whole club down. I went and smashed everyone up in it. All my mates know this. And um, I got arrested, got put on remand, and then literally, like, I then come back out because there was no, it was so busy. There, everyone was fighting, everyone was getting bottled and smashed, and all the rest of it. My mate got his throat stabbed in a bottle. Got his, like, bottle was, I think, smacked over his head and then stuck him in his throat. And he ended up in hospital. Everyone ended up in hospital. And then I ended up getting nicked. And then, yeah. Uh, You've had a couple of not guilties? Yeah, they were not guilty. Well, he's was um, just like an old. Mm. I just chuck it out. Yeah. What was like in Spain? Spain was all right. Spain was, I, I was only there for a few for a few days. And then like, the fl- I had probation on the Thursday. So I wasn't supposed to be out of the country. I flew to Spain to sort all that out and then come back after all that. And then I was in probation. And there, one was going to me. So, Steve, is everything okay? You all right? Um, how's things? How's like, you, you know, you're angry? Because I had anger, so I've been to think first courses, anger management courses. I've done a lot. I was like, yeah, not too bad. Yeah, she goes, I felt all right. Do you know what I mean? And then my like, first time in my life, I had a bit of money. And then when I see a bit of money, I thought, oh, I want more of that. Do you know what I mean? So it was like, yeah, Spain was all right. I ended up going back there quite a lot now. So I go to Spain quite a lot. When did you start speaking out about it all? When was the first time? Can you remember? About my past? Yeah. I didn't ever speak about my past, apart from when I was talking. If I got a girl, like a girl when I had a girlfriend, so like my ex ex who's got my kids, I spoke to her a bit about it. And then it's kind of got, yeah, I know I'm not going to go into that, but yeah, I spoke to her a little bit about it. And then, yeah, I think when you, because you're close to someone as a girlfriend, you kind of like, but I sabotage my relationships. And I, I think every man does it to a degree. I was the same. Yeah. Break them all down three week, three months, and then I'll break it down so they don't hurt me. Uh, relationships exactly that, are the exactly most, that. Uh, relationships are the most painful thing for a man. Like you've yeah. been through a lot of torment and pain in your life. We're always looking for love. We can all, no matter what it is, we always search for love. People say I'm happy being single. That's bullshit. Bullshit. Yeah. yeah we all it's want not, love. We all want to take care of you. Nurturing, mothering. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. Men are we're weaker than women. 
We are softer than women. And and that's the thing. We want feminine energy and masculine energy and it makes sense. But if a woman's loving and caring, you'll give her the world. Oh, 100%. See if she's masculine and argumentative and you fight back and then you're arguing. And then well, that woman would never be in a decent relationship. She'll always be yeah. in and out. Mm-hmm. I literally said this the other day. Like I was talking to a, a certain ex. I'm going to say names and stuff. And I said to her, the way you portray yourself with photos and stuff and all this and all the sexy photos, you've got two sets of men. You've got a guy that looks at her and goes, I'll bang that. Every man will do that. And when when these women, like, I, I want them to be good because they've got my kids. So there's nothing I want than happy for them. Do you know what I mean? When you betray yourself, is that like dressing up with your things out and all that kind of stuff. Guys are like, well, what? They, they, we're just going to get this a shag. Because every guy out there want to bang you. Yeah. But they don't want to be with you. Yeah. So if you put, I said to her, if you put photos up, just, you know, and actually become a really good mum and going out and dressing up as a mum, you know, taking the kids out and putting things if you picture your mum. Every guy that says about the bang will flick past you. But the guys that want to be a part of that family, well, then you'll get the right attention. Because yeah. then that guy will be like, oh, she's all, she, she's a really good mum. And they like that mummy feeling, that really yeah. mum that really eyes, she's not a slag, she must be a good mum, whatever reason, she's single. I'll have a go at that. And then she'll get the right man to want to come in and take on the kids. Do you know what I mean? But women crave attention. And yeah. that's what women need to understand. Men don't want that shit. If you're, if, for me, if you're with somebody, you're sold. I'm sold, they're sold. If you're jumping about in bikinis and for me it's just putting a big for sale sign on for me and it's like putting your DMs. There's no there's no respect, there's no loyalty there. You're craving something. Same as if a man following birds with bikinis and lighting their foes. It's just the same as a form of cheating. You're opening the window and opening the door to liking them and them liking you. And for me, both these are supposed to be sold, supposed to be love and loyalty. For me, if you want a happy relationship, come off social media. I agree. I totally agree. And I think men are too scared to say things now because it's a, a form of control and behaviour, this and that. But fuck that, man. You've got to value you. Why the fuck would I want a girl, my missus, putting bikini photos on for other guys to like it? To be zooming in on their pictures and looking at fucking every bit of detail. Yeah. They're craving attention. Tell them fucking straight, listen, you'll not be with me if, you, if you're fucking, f- your Instagram's not on private or you're deleting yeah. those photos. It's not controlling. People say it's insecure. It's not. It's we know how men work. We know how men yeah, function. Yeah, yeah. That's a green yeah. light for a man to slip into the DMs and people yeah. say, "Oh, your girl doesn't." But you're opening it up for for sale sign because every girl that does that, you think slag. It's sad reality, but you think slag easy to task. Especially your mates as well. Do you think of your mates? Yeah, will always go into your ex's DMs. Well, you know, the old mates and friends do, but if if you've got as the social media is just a dating website. Yeah, it is, yeah. So as There's no difference from Tinder or Hinge. It's just a greeting. Uh, so you've got to value, you've got to have boundaries. Now, some people accept that life. I'm not one to accept that. I want a housewife. I want somebody yeah. who's got a loving family. I do, yeah. Just as protective and I'll, I will give them the fucking world. But again, it's, we're living in a backward society where it's accepted. And that's why relationships are breaking down. Over 50, 60% are ending in divorce. It's too easy to meet people. Do you know what I mean? If you want a happy relationship, then come off social media. Not everybody would, though. Uh, Some people get. I, th- I think social media is going to get worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think mental health is going to get worse. I think I think it's going to get bad. <laughs> yeah. I've got I've got a thing at the moment where I, I, I literally said to my missus at the moment, I said, I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm going to do like a mental health thing online. There's a company, then you just like you, you do like a Zoom call. I'm going to actually try and get in, like put my like concentrate, put my heart into that. And help people that actually have mental health. I'll tell you one thing. I've got to say this. I've got to say this. I just thought about it then. Because I was thinking of loads of things to say. And I had said none of them. (laughs) (laughs) Literally. Do you know what gets my back up more than anything? That really grinds on me like bad. It's all these young people now. That are going on social media about mental health. And they ain't even experienced it. And they're getting all these social media like likes and follows and stuff like that and I, I watched a few of them and i was like i know i can tell a liar i can tell someone if they've been through it or not you just get that when you grind through the life and the streets prisons and boys you get to know people and what they've been through and stuff like that this like when i watched a couple of these like mental health things and i was watching i was thinking you're oh, fucking what are you doing he's like you can do it get off your sofa go out there put your chin up let's do it let's let's fight for this let's fight for that and you know let do the same tomorrow. Stop being a wimp. Blah, blah, blah. And I sat there and I thought, who are you talking to, mate? Like, who are you actually fucking talking to? 
You won't be saying that if your mum was raped and your dad got shot in the face in front of you. You wouldn't be saying that. Do you know what I mean? That's a little bit different. And I was sitting there, I was thinking, oh, mate, these, they're just all jumping on the mental health bandwagon. Yeah, it's for likes. Yeah, it's, it's for, for likes. likes. There's a lot of people, yeah. mental health's at an all time high, but a lot of people, in my own opinion, that I've spoken to enough people now, a lot of people aren't struggling with mental health. It's just they're struggling with life. But now it's just a case of, it's mental health, my mind's gone, it's not. You just yeah. need to find a bit of fucking strength to yeah. exercise. My book on the front of it, uh, it's obviously like about alone. And alone means like, whether you're from a rich family, whether you're from a poor family, this is where like mental health can come in different forms. Yeah. And I've seen friends of mine, I saw a guy in jail, he like, he shouldn't have even been in there, I don't think, because he got done for a fraud, but it wasn't it, it was his mate. And he explained to me, but he got like five years. And he was from a really good background. And his mental health was so bad because his parents didn't love him. He had all the cars, the money, everything. But they were just paying for babysitters and paying for this while they were going off around the world. So he never had that love from his parents. He killed himself. He, he actually killed himself. He had enough. His, for his mental health to go that bad, for his parents not to love him and stuff like that. And he came from that really rich background. He had to do himself in. See where we grind through the life, like from cancer state and stuff like that. We're kind of like, we get tougher from a young age mm. and strong don't get me wrong like a lot of people like i know would have been killed like killed themselves and some of my stuff but i think sometimes like if you're from that background that you, maybe your, your head's not as strong as what we are we're growing that growing strong maybe like you're just quite weak so you don't know what background you're from but i i respect all backgrounds whether you're from a, a posh background or a cancer estate background any mental health is mental health what affects me might affect someone worse. What affects them worse might affect me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, there's different levels, different levels of trauma and, and mental health. Yeah. But again, but at that stage, everybody's drinking and taking yeah. drugs and fucking gambling. You, and if you're doing all that, your mental health's going to go at some point. So it is. But if you can eliminate the negatives, exercise a bit, try and speak out. But speaking out, you can only speak so much before yeah. fucking being a hindrance. Do you know what I mean? There's only so many times you can say, right, you need to get your fucking head out of your ass. There's only so much advice you can give someone yeah. and they're just repeating the same cycles. Yeah. You need to do new patterns, new things to then create a better future for yourself. When are you, when are you at your happiest? Do you get happy still? When I'm at the sea. Yeah, nature. I'm at the sea. Why? I don't know. I can't even explain it to you. I don't know. My sister Rachel's the same. Do you get upset when you go to the sea? Yeah, I do, yeah. I kind of like look out to the sea and I like it when it's like dusk and it's just getting a bit dark. You hear the waves and you look at the sky and look at the sea and I think, mate, like, what is this life all about? Do you know what I mean? What, what is it all about? I always question, like, what am I supposed to do? Do you know what I mean? Like, say, like, you've only got a certain amount of time left. Say, like, at the ages we are now, how many sun, summers have we got left? 15 summers left? 20 summers left? Or 10 summers left? That's it. We're old. So what are you going to do in that life? What are you going to do now? This is what you're meant to do. <clears throat> Share I, your story. Yeah. Tough well, man, pretending to be tough, going through all the misery and pain. You then go and speak at schools. You then go and speak yeah. at children's homes. You then be a light for other people who stung at that. Well, this is what I think my legacy is. I think sure. my legacy is to help. You've been through the pain and torment for a reason. You're still here for a reason. Use it to the advantage. Your book will then help others. People will come forward. And then what happens is <clears throat> you become a light for, again, the people who doesn't see any future doesn't you you probably still don't see a future you've released a book fuck's sake proud of you like you're doing sitting doing a podcast one of the biggest podcasts about oh yeah you're fucking yeah, doing all right yeah, no like, yeah. this will open so many doors and <clears throat> and then you go and then you start enjoying speaking about it yeah, because yeah. you know it's helping others you know somebody yeah. sitting in the back of the class or the fucking somebody that's scared the life go do you know what if he can do it then it makes people open up this is what it's about this is why you're here Obviously, you went through a lot of pain and torment, but there's not many people get through the other end. Why do you still think you're here? And you're not dead? I don't know. I, I generally think it's maybe because of my legacy. Like, trying to... I, I want to help people with mental health. Like, I genuinely do. And, I, and I've helped two people. Like, this girl and this guy on my Facebook, one of them inboxed me and was like, Steve, I know around our area, like, you're a bit of a boy, blah, blah. We respect you, who you are, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, cool. And he was like, what What about this? And I'm going through really bad mental health about this, 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 this. And instantly I was like, I could help him. So I understand. It's, I can understand mental health. Like It's like my second nature. So I helped him. And he's, and he's all right. I spoke to him the other day. And this other girl, I've never met her in my life. I don't know. I, I knew this guy a little bit, but I didn't know this girl. And she was going through everything, kind of wrist and stuff like that, like really bad. And then all of a sudden she's like, 
said, oh, she's spread me this massive essay. It was huge. And I was like, are you, are you doing? And I was just like, I can't really read that well. So I've got a missus to read it for me. So I can barely see out my left eye either. And uh, so she read it to me and I was like, okay, cool. So I texted her my number. I said, call me when you get five minutes and I'll talk to you about what you've said. As soon as she rang me, I started, I was just instantly like, it was natural for me. I started asking her questions. She's like, where you, where'd you grow up? Blah, 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 this, 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 this. And before you knew it, I sort of knew why her life had gone the way it was. I could see it before she'd seen it. So then I guided her the right way. And she, I spoke to her about three weeks ago. And she was like, my life's going really well. I'm going to the gym. I'm training. I feel good about myself. Gym is one of the best for mental health. It is the best. And you know, walking, don't run, walking. And putting some like, and don't walk with like crazy, oh, I'm going to kill your music on. Walk with some really nice, relaxing music. Oh, no music. Or no music, yeah. That's yeah. when you find who you are. And like I say, music's got different frequencies on it. So it can fuck about with your mindset. Yeah. Anyway, I used to listen to fucking The Game and Tupac. And, yeah. And I was fucking ready to kill some cunt. Yeah. And I was angry. And now I understand frequencies now where yeah. that's why my brain was fried. You're going to the gym to feel good, not feel worse. So you're coming out buzzing. Your people listen to music all the time, the radio in the car, earphones at the gym. It's constant. Whatever you're feeding your mind so important. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think like when we used to go out when we were younger and stuff like that, the boxing was on, there's always a fight. It's like you'd, you'd get ready, you'd get dressed up and that and we'd like, back in the day, like it sounds a bit fucked up, but a fight in the fuck was our night. <laughs> get some testosterone and release it. Do you know what I mean? But we'd go out, we'd get all me and all the boys together, about five or six of us and all of us were like good boxers and fight, but like everyone was fighters. And we'd get on and we'd get him a gear and I'd be like, yes, tonight's boxing. Got scrapped tonight. Do you know what I mean? Like, what if you lost or you won? I said, I won the hardest man in the world who could fight and beat. I got punched up loads of times not like punched up as in like I got a lost fight but like Dawn would smack me on the side and I'd be put on the arse get back in a fight and stuff like that but you just have to scrap it out or whatever it is I was more of like I'll go and do the next day like, secretly do you know what I mean I was kind of that guy and like, I remember loads of times Cole when he used to ring me up and go don't do it we we'll do it this way or I'll get one of my good pals the Reaper ring me up and be like Steve listen to me son and he, I listen to him loads the Reaper because he's very educated. But anyway, we'd go to town and we'd get the scraps on and that. As soon as you start watching boxing, box is going on. Everyone would be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then literally, puts, <laughs> I knew him, one of my pals from Bratnell. He's, um, everyone knows this guy as well. He just is sitting there and go, yeah, and he'd be doing this. So you think he's a bit nutty, yeah? And oh, oh, should I say his name? Wayne. His name's Wayne. Anyway, so everyone knows this guy. He'd go this and he got glass smash over his head. And he'd go off. And he said, everyone like, would just start a fight and it was just constant. like, And it was just normal like for him to put a glass over his head and fight the whole people in the blub. Then we'd all start a fight and go outside scrapping, windows go through and that. And everyone, people would be knocked out on the floor. But, oh, he got knocked out yesterday. Oh, he got knocked out. He got knocked out. I used to do a thing where like, I'd, I'd scrap the night before when I used to drink. And the next day I used to dread the texts. Sorry about that. <laughs> sorry about that. I just want to apologise. <laughs> I'd have to say sorry to everyone for the night before. But yeah, it was that was quite mad. What's the worst thing about being in a life of crime? The worst thing? Living a lie. Living a big lie. It's just a load of bullshit. It's a big lie. It's a load of bullshit. Um, the only time I'm interested now is if someone fucks up my family. That's it. I'm not interested in it anymore. Genuinely, I can't be asked. I just want to like... I kind of like, yeah, like I said, I think that my legacy now with the mental health kind of like help people myself off i've got a, my missus now i really like really happy for the first time in a relationship i genuinely feel like it's going to last whereas my other ones are kind of self-sabotaged them i think one of my worst things as well i had i got three kids from one of my exes i've got my two sons and a girl and uh i got my firstborn son so when when a guy gets a boy in his life it's like i've got a son yes and she gave me two kids she gave me two boys so I've got Riley and Tommy and Lily. It's, man, I've never really had a chance to even meet my little girl. But when I had, like, Riley, she gave me a son. I was like, yes, you know, when you do your thing, you've got a son. Then she had, like, literally a year later, i got another boy. I'm like, two boys a year apart. Oh, my God, like, that's like, for me, because I'm a really good boxing trainer, I was like, I'll get straight in then. I'll start teaching them to box, and then they can go straight into the ABAs, and I'll start training them. And, do you know what I mean? That kind of stuff. But her family looked at it like violence. No, because they were quite posh they didn't like all that i'd take them out hunting we'd go and kill a pheasant i'd teach them how to pluck it get it cook with it oh no that's taught that you're going to mentally torture your kid it's fucking normal but i was classed as the wrong one do you know what i mean like i was saying yeah i'm insane but i'm teaching my kid one had to defend himself i'll show him nothing but love i loved my boys i loved my kids 
I always just tell Riley I loved him. I took him to school every day. Like well, most days I'd take him to school, pick him up, walk him back across the field, stuff like that. And I'd take him out with me and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? And it was hard. Obviously she had three kids. I've always said to every single person like that I've been with, she was like the girl I was with at the time. She was brilliant in the relationship. Like she genuinely was really good to me. Like, and I, back then I was like, ah, like, fuck off. Do you know what I mean? Now I've, like, I've grown up a lot. Do you know what I mean? I've had to learn a lot and I've grown up a lot, a lot in myself. But I, I was a fucking relationship. Like I self sabotaged it. Shut the fuck up. You talking to you, bitch. Fuck you. Like, I was like, ah, fuck off. Always going out. Didn't give a shit about a relationship. Come in when I want. Do you know what I mean? At the end of the relationship, when we broke up, and I understand why. Do you know what I mean? We really broke. And it was just like, it, I weren't no good. It was no good for me to be in that relationship. But what killed me again was like, I feel like everything's been taken away from my life all the time. When I love something, it's taken away from me. I love something. As soon as you fall in love, something's taken away. So that's why you self sabotage. So obviously I bro we, we broke up together. She's died enough, I had enough. And then she went her way, I went my way, whatever. And I went to see my kids at hers. She, they were like, no, you're not seeing your kids, whatever. And then I, the police come around and I managed to get my kids and take them to the park. I'd done nothing wrong. I actually done nothing wrong. And so I, uh, they sort of dropped the kids back at one o'clock. So I took the kids back at one o'clock. I was taking the park, dropped them off. Next minute I get an injunction served on me. And I had to go in the house. <clears throat> I get an injunction served on me. Then I go to a contact centre. And I always said to her, I'll never go to a contact centre. I'm not having social services back in my life at this age now when I've been through the system my whole entire life. I'm not good. I'm not a bad dad at all. People know me now. I'm a really good dad. Like I genuinely know that about me. I love my kids. I see all my kids other than them. My eldest kid, like I speak to her every day. Like uh, we have good laughs and jokes. I mean, I'm always for her. I tell her I love her every day. Same with my other two kids. I've just given my kids back. I'm seeing my kids later and tomorrow. I love my kids. I spend every day on my kids. And my ex Mrs. now, even though she's my ex, she's like Stevie, one of the best dads. Like, I was such a good dad. Do you know what I mean? Like, regardless of relationship, I'm a good dad. Do you know what I mean? And I love my boy Riley and Tommy. I didn't get a chance to see Lily properly, but I still love Lily. She's still my kid. But to have them taken away, stuff like that, I think that was wrong. Do you know what I mean? You shouldn't have done that. When was the last time you seen them? Fuck me, 10 years ago. It's hard, man. It's Mate, so weird, you, man. It's a, yeah, that killed me. And I'll tell you what. That's probably one of the only times in my life, like, or not, like, other than like the rape thing for me, killed me. Mate. It ripped my heart out. She thinks that I wanted to like go and see my kids, to try and get back of her, something like that, which is like actually wrong. Like, I love my kids. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'd love to have gone out the time. And my sister's tried speaking to her. I sent her sister like essays that I've kept and took screenshots of to say that I tried to contact her, tried to contact my kids, tried to see. What it. age are your kids now? I got three kids and. Uh, so Riley and they'd be about 12 11, 12 it's sad man because you know the destruction of life out there you I don't, don't want know, to be there I don't know any of my kids date of birth to be fair my brain's gone yeah but that's what it's all about is family family yeah. is everything in it is uh, there's nothing else matters but listen I've got kids to different women it's difficult sometimes but it's just the way it is, but fathers have got legal rights, so... Yeah, well, I tried to go to the court. I know I fought for a year in court, and uh, I went in there with my sister and stuff like that, and because... Your previous? No, I went to the... I went to the, I went to a contact centre, and I hadn't seen my kids in months, and they were hanging off my legs, crying their eyes out, like crying their eyes out. I was crying, and the woman came up to me and said, you've got to stop crying, because it's mentally messing the kids up, or we're going we're gonna to have to stop this with me and the kids and instantly my head's gone I was like take these fucking kids away from me now get them off me get them off me then and I took it as a an attack to me do you know what I mean like, and I, I walked out I said get them off me get them off me now and I took them off me I could my, you got to think about my mental health that's what I'm saying oh think about your kids fuck you it's not about you Steve what do you mean it's not about me like I've just been through like hell and back in my life I've had nothing but social services and the like the the great I saw no called rape or whatever that happening to me and Boarding schools, children's homes, prisons, beating, stabbings. Like I've had, I've been stabbed twice. Like I've had it all. And what you think, I'm going to go and then let these people then talk to me like I'm an idiot and make me feel bad. Like my mental health's going mental. I'm crying, I'm breaking down. Like mentally in my head, I'm breaking down because I want to see my kids. Why am I having to come in here? Why are you telling me that you're going to turn away the, 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 the meat with my kids if I, if I don't stop crying? Well, who says that to you? Do you know what I mean? Like I've didn't seen my kids in months. When did you get stabbed? I got stabbed in prison <laughs> on the uh, rally wing as I was walking up the stairs. I got a massive scar inside my groin where I got stabbed as I was going up the stairs. 
that was bad. And I got done in my back, did I, when I was in that uh, place. I got slashed as well, across my back and my neck. What was it like coming, I know you went back and forth for the book, but how does it feel now it's been complete and you've got something positive coming out in your life? Uh, Are you still nervous about it? Yeah, well, I, a bit, yeah, maybe a bit nervous now, but more like people are now going to know me inside out and it's like people are like oh shit like where's people don't really know me i'm quite i'm quite reserved I'm like, people know me but they don't know me personally do you know what i mean people just know me on the streets and stuff like that but it's like what else is there your life like it's kind of like people are now gonna know my life and it's like they're in my life now like if the whole world's now in my life do you know what i mean they can tell me who i am and who i am as a person it's like then you're gonna be judged and then you can always tell like i was when i was talking to jay about it, he was like don't look at the comments because you're going to get a hundred comments down there saying, good, I hope you was right, blah, 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 do you know what I mean? Because they're trollers and they just love to just chat crap, do you know what I mean? I was like, oh, God, do you know what I mean? So that's quite nerve It's not nice to have that kind of stuff said about it, do you know what I mean? Yeah, but you're going to get a lot of love and support. Listen, people ain't as ruthless as <clears throat> we make out either. There's, there's, listen, there's a lot of assholes out there, but people who write negative comments are in pain themselves. The old saying, hurt people, hurt people. <clears throat> it's, it's a classic saying. People are just obviously, it's trigger points that people are seeing. <clears throat> There's a lot of envy and jealousy because they can't get to certain levels. They can't make changes. They can't speak out against their trauma. Do you know what I mean? Anybody that's, if, it doesn't matter who you are in life. If you're a good guy, you're a good guy. And if you're a dick, you're a dick. And no matter what, we've all made mistakes. We've all come f f some come through life with some sort of fucking struggle. No matter who you are. But listen, you've came through it. That's the main thing. You've came through it. Um, you've got your book out. How can people get in contact with your social medias and stuff? If Anybody wants to reach out and say they've been through the same thing? Yeah, so I, it's, I've got the Instagrams and Facebooks and all that sort of stuff done. Uh, there is a YouTube channel he's done. It's all Alone with Crazy Steve. That's what it's all. Every single one of them is Alone with Crazy Steve or Alone with Crazy Steve UK. Or Alone with Crazy Steve 22, I think it is. But I think most of them are Alone with Crazy Steve or Alone with Crazy Steve UK. But I don't know how... I. I Jay sorts all that out, so I ain't got a clue. He's like my manager. So, where do you go forward for the future, Steve? What's your plans? Uh, for the future, well, the book's got to come out, got to do a book signing. So, I just like, no, I'm like, what do you know what I mean? It's like, what do you do with a book signing? Like, I've got these banners been done, and I've got like behind me with the book page and stuff, and then I'm signing books and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so I'll have that coming up. I've got um, a couple of talk shows coming up, I think, that Jay's sorting out now. Other than that, like, it's like uh, there's a film company that I think getting involved, don't want to try and think about maybe doing a movie or a series. This is what it's all about. Your books then become a script for films, docuseries. It's just a case of <clears throat> making money from your pain. And like I say, the more you talk about it, the more you actually relax from it and go, do you know what, fuck it, it's my pain, I own it. People know what I've been through. If they don't like it, they can fuck off. If put, nobody's going to support you for what you've been through. They're really, really good people anyway. Do you know what I mean? Like, fuck everybody off. Just <clears throat> try and get what you can. Finish a year strong. Hopefully, I don't know in the future, maybe see your kids again. I, I genuinely don't know. Oh, I'd love to see my kids, mate. It's hard, isn't it? Because, like, when you get, like, you, when it's, like, an ex, it's like, I don't know whether she's, like, fuck you to me. It's still now. But it's better. I see when people, I've, I've had it myself, man, where they become better with the kids and use yeah. them as weapons and tools. But, listen, you probably wear others can as well. And yeah. they're probably thinking... Yeah. Would you want your kids raised by you at that time if you're full of drinking yeah. drugs and violence? You wouldn't really. No. Do you know what I mean? They're I probably wasn't drinking then. Yeah, but they probably think they're doing the right thing no matter what was going on. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because of your past and your mental health and your mood swings. Yeah. That's not an environment to be raising kids right. because that would have yeah, done more damage right. with you there yeah. and actually not being there. So now if you're in a good place and you start doing well, <clears throat> then it's a chance to fight back and go, listen, I'm in a good place. I wasn't in a, a fighting chance there because your head was fucked. I think my daughter's like, turning 16 next week so my daughter's um yeah she's turning 16 next week and an incident happened not long ago where the social was involved not for me from one of her family members i'm gonna say who and they come up to me and it was like oh about my daughter what had happened i said speak to my daughter like this that, and other and the police were involved and the social services and they turned around to my daughter and was like well how's your dad do you know what i mean like because they sort of heard and know who i am and uh, she was like, my dad's brilliant. She's like, this is where it's so good. Like back then, my kids never had a voice. And now my kids got older. She's now got a voice and she could be heard. 
So the whole of her life, she knows me because obviously I look after her. How many kids you got all in? Six. How many different mums? Three. That's not too bad. I'm free and free. Yeah. But I just think that is what look, men are just fucking. It's back. See, back then I didn't think I'd make 30. I think so we just want kids with me. I, I didn't think um, I would be happy to have kids with anybody back then. Not anybody, but I would yeah. just didn't think. And then obviously. It's the destruction that I love my kids. I'm with my kids all the time, but it's the destruction it causes in their own little psyche. Yeah. Not being from a stable household, being raised by stepmoms or stepdads. It's not normal. I don't think it's good. I I actually don't like broken homes. Yeah, no, it's it's my, it fucks up. I can't stand broken homes. Yeah. Broken home for me is the worst. I think you failed. I think you failed as parents. Yeah. If you got like broken home for me is like if you you should try and sort stuff out. You got to try and sort stuff out to bring the. Give these kids like the best, best chance. It's best best chance. It comes the kids. It's the kids' future, because everybody. I always say it, and I'll keep saying it. But everybody that comes from the broken home, you see the destruction it causes in that later in life. Yeah, do you know what I mean? What was it like when you started? When your dad did your dad know everything now? Yeah, my dad knows everything now. And yeah. what was that feeling? My dad actually came to my house and apologised to me, like for what had happened to me and stuff. And and it was the first time he'd ever said anything to me like that properly. So it actually got to me a bit. It actually, like, made me feel like, oh god, like I take stuff like that right to heart, and I'm like, all right, maybe a bit upset. Do you know what I mean? I thought, well, fair play to him. Do you know what I mean? Do you cry a lot? Who my dad? You? Yeah. I I look at crying as a weakness. Do you? That's a strength for. I know, but like recently, <coughs> not all the fucking time though. There's, listen, as a man, it's good to now and again. But not all the time. You've got to I, go, you've got to push through the pain. I think recently, like so, I had a lot. This last two and a half years behind this book, it's been a rock, a, literally like a roller coaster. Jay's like, we got. I love the book on this book being wrote. It's like mad. I had to stop the book for different reasons and stuff. Like, but I've had like illnesses, like where well, I got really ill and I was in hospital, and then uh, breaking up an eight year relationship with my kids, then meeting who I personally think is. The love of my life, like actually, and then get married. <laughs> get married, got married. Congratulations, cheers. I think about that every woman that comes into my life, though. It's the one, it's the one, it's the do, one. Do you know, three one flare I'm, and the fucking psychos. Oh, no, I'll be honest with you, James. Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Like, uh, do you know, every woman that I've ever been with, and people that I know, and women I've like dabbled with, and stuff like that. I know their backgrounds, I know where they come from, I know that kind of stuff, and I sort of know that their relationship's not going to last forever. I know the instant, the minute I meet them. Yeah, we use them. But I'll wing it. We use them. Yeah. We use them. Use it. For it. our own. Yeah. For our own. Try to feel good. Yeah, we, yeah. Go on your arm. Yeah, let's do this. Got a nice car going in there. Do you know what I mean? And I know they're always at the end of it. It's never going to work the way you expect it to work. Do you know what I mean? And I genuinely mean, and I'm, I, I know it sounds like people that know me know this. Like, I would never, like, I wouldn't put my name to someone like that if I didn't think it was going to last. And I think with like my missus now, Sophie, I think like she genuinely like, so my missus, she's only had like a, a few men. She's not like her at all. She didn't have a man for five years. She's not like that kind of girl. Do you know what I mean? So she doesn't care about all the, I want a man kind of thing. She's quite like, she does. She, well, I met her, she done tree surgery. So she was like physically like fit and strong. She's a bit of a nutter herself. Like she scraps it out. She's been stabbed in her face. Like yeah, she's like she's like that. But she's been that kind of background. But she literally like when I first started like seeing her, she like where women usually tell you they're going to do. Oh, I love you. I'll do this for you. I'll do that for you. She showed me instead of told me. Like I was going for a really bad time with the book, my mental health, writing stuff about my past, and it really did bring up my mental health. And I went back to the yard, I broke up with my ex, my kids, it was like, it was like, it was so toxic and that. And I went back to my yard and I'll never forget it. I was crying my eyes out and I was screaming at the clouds saying, just fucking take me, just take me, I'm done, I'm done. And as I said that, she walked in the yard, she walked into like where my container was and she just took all my clothes and just went and washed them. And I just thought, well, she did. Anyway, I carried on, I was in a bad way, but I sort of like suck it up because she walked in, do you know what I mean? She come back in, she goes, just run you a bath, but she had a, she's a tra mom is a traveler so she had a caravan next to my yard because i run you a bath <clears throat> i was like oh cool went in there i sat in the bath put all candles around it and i just sit in the bath like this and i was like a bit weird but okay cool then she done me food she made me a drink and i sat on the sofa like a sofa she rubbed my feet until i went to sleep and i hadn't slept probably in months 
and I fell asleep and I wake up at seven o'clock in the morning. I woke up and she'd gone because she'd gone to work and she'd, uh, she'd made some food on the side. I think there was a drink. I can't remember, but it was all like a bit blurry. And I was just like, what the fuck is this? Like, and then she left and then she takes me a message saying, hope you're really well. Look, if you need anything, I'm here. And I was like, oh, cool. So she got away and I come out and I've gone back into my yard, sort myself out. And I thought, right, suck it up, sort yourself out. That night she takes me like well, all day she was saying to me are you okay do you need anything blah blah and then she sort of left me to it and then is she like just done things for me like then my washing again and then i went back in she goes oh do you want to have a bath tonight so i went back in she so took my clothes i've had a bath by the time i come out she already put them in the washing machine i was like what she's like i got you some fresh ones from yesterday and she'd already folded them and put them up and i was like what the fuck is going on like my head was like mad like and we still didn't get together like she just was really there for me then I had to go, I had a hospital appointment in um, Winchester because so I had some really bad illness stuff. I'll, I'll talk about it like later on. And like, and I ended up, I had a really important scan <clears throat> and I didn't want to fucking fight to go. I didn't have a car at the time. So I had to walk to, because my ex-missus, just her car blew up. So I gave her my car to get the kids to school. So I'm not going to have a car because I'm got no money. <laughs> I, got, I gave her my car. So I then went to, I walked to the bus stop, got the bus to Winchester Hospital goes off sitting there and then I get a phone call from Sophie. Oh, where are you at? I said, I'm at the hospital. Oh, what time are you back? I said, what time the buses? She was like, what? you've got a bus. I was like, well, I've got a car. So I'm in the, I'm in there like for about another hour and a half comes out and she sat in the car park waiting for me. Didn't even ask. It's just like, she was there. And then every appointment I had after that, all the scans and all the scans and I had this like blood thing going on. And then she was just was sat in there, like, sat with me for four and a half hours, five hours, just, just didn't say anything. She didn't even talk. My voice is quite quiet. She just sit there. But just being by my side, you know, that's a rock. Do you know what I mean? And she stood by me through the sickness and helped my death to us part. That's why I married her. Yeah, yeah. good on you, bro. Good kind of there, mate. Well. Yeah, I that's appreciate what, that. That's all men want. Yeah. We just want somebody there. Just, we don't ask for much. We're, yeah. we're simple fucking creatures. Maybe I don't speak for everybody, but for me personally, oh, you're actually right. it's just for somebody yeah. to love you. I want a housewife. Yeah. Somebody raises a good family in the kitchen. And people say, oh, you're a sh chauvinistic. I'm, I'm not. I'll, I'll go and provide. I don't drink. I'll be home every night. I'm home every weekend to provide that life. I just <clears throat> I feel this feminine and masculine energies. <clears throat> it works to a T. Yeah. Men and women both need each other. But men are simple. All you need to do is love a man and respect a man. Yeah. And don't fight and argue. <clears throat> yeah. If there is, talk about it. I feel as if everybody's argumentative now. and it, yeah. It's not good for nobody. Men are, men are, men are, are very fragile beings. We are. So we are. I watch a podcast, actually, another one. <laughs> I actually rate this girl. Um, Sadia. Who? Hey. Sadia. She's good. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I've seen a few of hers as well. She's actually really good. Um, but no, it's... Um, Pearl. So, Pearl? Yeah, Pearl. So I watch Pearl quite a lot. And um, she's got good... She's got really good things. That women obviously hate her because she, she goes against women. Yeah. But I don't think she's going against women so much. Like... Yeah, pearly things, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I don't think she's going against women so much. I think she's like trying to say like this is what men are. Like men don't care about that. And uh so I do I rate her, I rate pearls, but there's another one, a fresh and fit from America. Have you seen that? Yeah, yeah, they've been on. Oh, they've been on? Yeah. Fresh and fit, mate. Big up fresh and fit. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm telling you now, fresh and fit, mate, is sick. I, I I actually watch them quite a lot, like I actually do. And um Zerka as well, he's so sick. <laughs> Zerka cracks me up. But yeah, fresh and fit. I tell you what, I learned, I, I, I learned from them is they keep saying like in quite a few of their podcasts that us men would date a McDonald's worker yeah. over someone that's got the blingy car and the flash hat. No, you person. Yeah. I call them mirror girls. They're like this all the time. A woman yeah. wouldn't know. But I would date a, a McDonald's yeah, but girl. women wouldn't date a man. But no, no, they wouldn't. Women <laughs> crave they crave attention. We crave yeah. respect. Hundred percent. See if you just uh, men are quite men are loyal as well. But if they're not feeling that loyal at home, they do wonder. They wonder. Yeah, and women is it's, it's just weird how it's all went backwards. We're brought on this planet to produce kids. We're brought on yeah. this planet to raise loving families. It's all fucking backwards now. We get it, but. Men are simple, man. All we need is a fucking nice cooked dinner and just yeah. be told we're doing good enough and are proud of you. A little bit of a rub that's, or something. Yeah, that's and, that. And you, and, and you crave that. Yeah. When you get it, well, you think, well, your heart goes yeah, back. Yeah, you just, your heart just craves. When male? Yeah, I, I, I went in with my missus the other day. I picked my daughter up from my ex-missus house and obviously she was in the front and obviously I've got one of them like T5 camper van things. I've got that and I've got an Audi R8, but I've got quite a few cars. But the T5 camper van's got like all the um like seven seats in the back and it goes down into a bed in that 
But when my daughter was in the front, my missus, I then picked my missus up after. So I went and picked her up. She sat in the back. And as soon as I picked her up, I said, you right, babe? Got in the car, I went to drive. She started massaging my back. She like, yeah, you're right. And gave me, just for about five minutes. See that? That's what we, te- we crave so, that. Yeah, yeah. We crave that like, I think you shouldn't have to do that to me. Yeah. But she makes me feel like she's there and she loves me. And it's like that, that really nice caring, that continuous caring. You know, when that runs out, and that all stops and they start going funny and stuff like that. That's when we wonder. Yeah, it's because we sense it and then we yeah. go, what's up? We know something's wrong. Then we get paranoid. Then we get insecure. Yeah. And then that's when the arguments start because we're not daft. We feel things as well. When somebody's quite off and you go, what's up with her? And then because you just want them to love you again. Yeah. And then that's when it ends up fucking, you smother it or whatever it is, it just destroys it. But how are you feeling telling your story today? feel better? I feel good with you, James. Actually, you're quite good. I feel comfortable with you. I feel yeah, really good, man. Yeah, yeah. Listen, you've smashed it. We'll get a part two. We can get into things deeper. Obviously, yeah. this is just to promote your book. Understand a bit about you, Steve, and just fucking keep smashing it. But would you like to finish up on anything else, brother? No, that's it, mate. That's all good. Yeah. And where can people buy your book? Amazon. So it's going to be on Amazon uh, this Friday. So it's going to be on Amazon, and then it's going to do like a uh, book launch, and then a pre-order. Is it? They do a pre-order, and then it'll. And then it's, it's out for anybody watching this who maybe went through that life or struggle the same as yourself what advice would you have for them to be honest um if if you're going through anything especially like mental health and stuff like that i say to all my friends that you have to have goals goal setting just get and do you know that there's a thing that we've lost is pen to paper we've lost that it's all phones and concentrating and eyeballing tv screens there's something really beautiful about pen to paper, brainstorming on pen to paper. If you could just get, get a bit of paper and just write down how you're feeling, how you can like set a goal for a week to two weeks to three weeks to four weeks, six months, and do baby steps. So say, oh, uh, next week I'm going to go fucking Lego land with my kids. It doesn't have to be about men. It could be about families as well, women that ain't got no father or something in their life. And say, so I'm going to go to Lego land next week, even though I don't do nothing on my life. And then after that, you can say, well, the week after I'm going to go and uh, I'm going to, if they ain't got a job, they can start looking for a job and say, well, I'll apply for these jobs or I'm going to start building like, like businesses or anything like that. Any, just keep your brain occupied. It's got to be occupied. If you don't occupy your brain, your brain does itself in, you start thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking. If you, if I don't occupy myself, I go straight back well, quite quickly, I say slowly, but I don't occupy back quite quickly. I'll go back to my past. I start thinking, 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 thinking. That's why I'm like, people know me. I've had so many different businesses because I just, I get one. And when it's finished, I feel like, oh, no, I'm going to crack up again. So I go and set another one up. I feel like, oh, no, I'm going to crack up again. So I keep changing. But goal setting is the main thing. Like, I know people who won't leave the house because they're paranoid. They've got like panic attacks. So I said to them, like, just take baby steps. Just like, you know, go to your front door, then outside the door, then have a walk around the street. But write it down on paper. I think that's the main thing. It's just writing it down and, Trying to goal set, do you know what I mean? That for mental health, definitely, mate. Steve, James. listen, mate, proud of yeah. you, brother. I wish you nothing but the best for the future. Good luck with the book. And listen, bro, I'll see you soon. Yeah, cheers, Take man. Care, I appreciate bro. it, James, and you, bro.